This is part 89 of jQuery tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss jQuery dialog widget. There are two simple steps to get the jQuery dialog widget on a web page. The first step is to place the content that you want in a dialog inside a div element and the second step is to write this one line of jQuery code. Find the div element and on that call the jQuery UI dialog function. These two steps would produce the dialog widget. Let's look at this in action. Let's flip to Visual Studio. Here we've got a div element and inside the div element we've got the content that we want in a dialog. If we view this page in the browser, this is how it looks like. The content of the div is rendered on the web page by default. Now, if you want to convert this div element into a dialog, all you'll have to do is find this div element. This div element has got an ID. So within our jQuery ready function, let's use the jQuery ID selector find the div element using its ID and on that I'm going to call the jQuery UI dialog function. Let's save our changes and reload this page. Notice the div element is now converted into a dialog. Now this jQuery dialog widget is highly customizable. It has got loads of options available. On this slide right here I've got a few of the options that are commonly used. Now if you look at this dialog here, it doesn't have a title and there are two ways you can get the title. One way is by setting the title attribute on the div element. So let's go ahead and do that. Title equals, let's say title from div element. Let's save the changes and let's reload this page. Notice the title attribute value is used as the title for the dialog. Another way is by using the title option of the jQuery dialog widget. So to our dialog jQuery UI function, let's pass a JavaScript object and I'm going to specify the title option. And let's say here title from title option. So here we have specified both the title attribute and the title option. When we do that, the title option value will override the value of the title attribute. So within our dialog now, we should get the value of the title option. So let's save our changes and reload this page and we should get the title from title option. Draggable. This is a Boolean option that determines if the dialog can be draggable by the title bar. So now at the moment, if you look at this, dialog here. Notice that as soon as we hover the mouse over the title bar, look at that, it changes to a different symbol and I can actually hold down my left mouse key and drag it around the web page. So by default, this draggable option is set to true. Now, for some reason, if you don't want the end user to be able to drag this dialog by the title bar, set that option to false. So let's go ahead and do that. Draggable to false. Let's save our changes and let's reload this page. And look at this now. When I have the mouse over the title bar, it doesn't change to that cursor which prompts us, you know, that this can be draggable by title bar. So I can't drag it anymore. Resizable, again, this is a Boolean option that determines if the dialog is resizable. At the moment, the dialog is resizable. Look at this. I can increase its height. I can also increase its width. So it's resizable. Again, for some reason, if you don't want the end user to be able to resize this dialog, then set that option to false. Resizable, false. So let's save our changes, reload this page. And now notice I can't really change its height and width. I can't resize it. Close on escape. Now look at this. When I press the escape key on the keyboard, the dialog closes. If you don't want the end user to be able to close the dialog by pressing the escape key, then set that option to false, close on escape. So let's go ahead and do that. Close on escape and I'm going to set that to false. Let's save our changes, reload this page and look at this. When I press escape key, you know, it doesn't close. Model. Again, this is a Boolean option that determines if the dialog is a model dialog. By default, 
this option is false meaning it's not a model dialog so let's actually to understand that let's throw in a text box here on this page so let's include an input element of type equals text and let's put a label for that let's say first name and let's include an HTML break and the default for model option is false so let's save our changes and let's reload this page so we have the dialog here and look at this as I have this dialog I can still you know interact with the elements that are present on the web page look at that I can actually type into the text box I can interact with the elements on the web page because this is not a model dialog now if you want to turn this dialog into a model dialog then all you have to do is set that model option to true. So let's save our changes, reload this page, and look at this. Now this is a model dialog. Now I cannot interact with the elements that are present on the page until I dismiss this model dialog. Look at this. As soon as I close this, now I can interact with the elements on the page. So to convert the dialog into a model dialog, all you have to do is set this option to true. So this is a Boolean option that determines if the dialog is model dialog. With model dialog, other items on the page will be disabled and cannot be interacted with until the dialog is closed. Auto open, this is very interesting. Now if you look at what's happening here at the moment, when we load the page, look at this, as soon as the page is loaded, you know, the code that's present within our document.ready function will be executed and you know this div element is turned into a dialog now in most of the web applications you know you want this dialog to be opened when you click a button or when you click on a link if that's the case then we don't want this dialog to be appearing like this so we want to associate that with a click of a button or a link so in order to achieve that we need to use this auto open option so by default you know this option is set to true which means as soon as the um, dialog widget is initialized it is also opened if you don't want that to happen all you have to do is set that auto open option to false so let's save our changes and let's reload this page Look at this, when the page is loaded, we don't have the dialog opening. Now when we click the button, that's when we want that dialog to open. So let's go ahead and place a button on this page. So input type equals button. Let's say value equals show dialog. And let's give it an ID. Let's call it BTN. So within our jQuery ready function, let's find this button using the jQuery ID selector and let's associate click event handler. So when we click the button, that's when we want to, you know, open this dialog. So to do that, I'm going to again find the div element and then call the dialog function and then I'm going to specify the name of the function here as a string. So we use the open method to show the dialog. So this code will execute when the web form uh, is loaded, that is when the document is ready. And that's going to initialize the dialog widget. When we click the button, you know, we are saying open the dialog. And, you know, here we have set auto open to false. So upon initialization, the dialog will not be open. So if you want to open that explicitly, call the open function of the jQuery dialog widget. So let's save our changes. Let's go ahead and reload this page one more time. And look at this, we have got a button here. Now when I click the button, that's when we are getting the dialog. But when the page initially loads, we don't have that dialog. So very useful option, auto open. So this is a Boolean option that determines if the dialog should open automatically upon initialization. If we set this uh, option to false, the dialog will stay hidden until the open method is called. Thank you for listening and have a great day.